What is up everyone, DJ Martini Midwest Reviews coming at you with another video for my channel. Today we're talking about my research when it comes to Bluetooth 5.4, let you know what some of the other versions brought, things like that. I did have a Bluetooth 5.3 video out not too long ago. I'm probably gonna erase that one, let this one take its place just because everybody was coming at me about the editing on that video. So hopefully this one will be a little bit better. That was one of my first earlier videos. Hopefully I'm getting a little bit better. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in, sticking with me no matter what. Uh, with my great subscribers out there please like subscribe and share if you're interested in any other tutorials or videos on tech or tech reviews those types of things that's what i love to do on this channel i'm just here to help just trying to do the research for you give you some information as easy as possible make it easy to digest from a consumer point of view from a simple man like me uh, just uh, trying to give you some information if i can help one person out there then I'm happy. So thank you so much for tuning in. DJ Martini Midwest, join the Martini Nation. We're steadily growing. So let's continue to grow this channel. And thank you for the love, support, positivity, and all the great comments and feedback. All right, let's go ahead and jump this, jump into this video on Bluetooth 5.4. So first we're going to go back in time a little bit, talk about, this has been about 20 years, 20 plus years, 1998, since Bluetooth was invented, created, produced, whatever you'd like to say. And the first thing they used kind of Bluetooth was, uh, it's for data, data transfer, I'll give you the exacts in a second, but it, a headset was the first kind of Bluetooth device that they were looking to make and then put it in computers and things like that. Bluetooth is used in various devices. There's hundreds of devices Bluetooth is used in from a retail perspective, business, computers, laptops, mouse, headphones, earbuds, controllers, gaming systems, all kinds of things, Bluetooth speakers. So basically Bluetooth is the short range technology of exchanging data between mobile devices. And so, like I said, with all those examples that I was telling you, it does work on the 2.4 gigahertz band it's between 2.4 and 2.4825 or something like that or something close to that, but it works on that 2.4 gigahertz band. Now, when we go back a little bit in time, we're going to go, there was Bluetooth versions 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, uh, and one of the biggest ones was kind of in the, the later days here was the Bluetooth 4.2. So from a retail perspective of getting earbuds, headphones, any kind of devices that you're looking at, if you're still running about Bluetooth 4.2, we're okay. You're still going to be, you're going to be okay. And it is, Bluetooth is backwards compatible. So it will work with old versions. Even if you have a new version, it will work with old versions. But Bluetooth 4.2 was one of the bigger ones where it really, I think, was working with smartphones and 4.1 kind of tweaked that we remember that 4g well the bandwidth was still the same as bluetooth so they're having some interference with bluetooth and 4g 4.1 corrected that that was around 2010 and then 4.2 was a big one for audio because it gave speed it had uh, power improvements gave you internet connection with ipv6 uh, so you could control items like your thermos your, uh, sorry your thermostat uh, light bulbs, things like that through communicating through Bluetooth. So very, very cool. Also added a lot of range in that 4.2 where you could get 60 meters of range or 240 feet. Now you're not going to get that full 240 feet because there's things called walls and trees and, and things that are going to block that signal, but it offered you up to that distance. So pretty cool there. So Bluetooth 4.2 was one of the bigger improvements. So if you're buying any kind of device these days, even if you're getting it used or anything, try to stay around Bluetooth 4.2 or above. And I think you'll be doing okay. So we're going to jump right into Bluetooth 5.0 since that's the version that we're in, even though the newest version is 5.4, which we'll talk about today. But you had Bluetooth 5.0 2016 that gave you more speed, 2x speed, 4x range. It really, really boosted the range. So you went from that 240 feet all the way up to almost 700 feet or more there, 240 meters. And once again, you could get up to that, but once again, there's trees and houses and walls and things that you have to go through. So you probably won't get that range, but you can get up to that range with that Bluetooth 5.0. So it was pretty, 
pretty big update. And those were pretty much the biggest things from, you know, layman's terms type of improvements. 5.1 was not a huge improvement besides adding tracking and finding the devices later. So that came really into play like keyboards and mouse like wirelessly. That way you could easily find it, track it, know where it is and connect to it pretty fast. So that was an improvement there. That was, and like I said, I'm not going through all everything, but just the kind of the big improvements that I think are important. And so then we go to Bluetooth 5.2 in 2020, which was really, really big for audio. So if you're a kind of an audio person and you want the best earbuds, headphones, you should probably be around Bluetooth 5.2, Bluetooth speakers, because it did have audio codecs improvements with LC3 codecs, latency improvements, sound quality improvements. It uh, had lower energy consumption, so you improve battery life as well. So it definitely had a lot of things. It also improved making smaller tech, so smaller chip set, set and things like that that use less power, more battery, like I said, and like say ear, earbuds or not exactly earbuds, but hearing aids, they could make them smaller, which made improvements with that as well for people. One other thing I wanted to add into the Bluetooth 5.0, which I missed was it also added connecting multiple devices. So you could do true wireless stereo connect, the TWS, and so you could connect two stereo speakers together. So that was offered in the Bluetooth 5.0, which is gonna be important to some people. So 5.3 comes around, or say, sorry, 5.2 comes around, and this added multiple devices. So then you could add different devices at the same time, like a pair of headphones, two pairs of headphones, you could choose in between them, which is a big improvement. Now in Bluetooth 5.0, the way the stereo sound worked was, one, your device connected to your earbuds, it connected to one, say the left earbud, and then that left earbud would connect to the right earbuds. Well, when you get down the list in 5.2, then it improved it. Could be kind of wrong in this, but I know I'm pretty close. But basically now your device could connect to one earbud and the device would connect to the other earbud. So then you kind of had a different way of connecting and it can communicate better and make it more efficient of the way of connecting instead of connecting from the phone to one earbud, the earbud connecting to the other earbud. Now you just connected from the phone to both earbuds. So it, it definitely changed and made some improvements between 5.0 and 5.2. So now we're getting to 5.3, which offered, once again, there's still improvement. It's kind of exciting to see how they can continue to improve some of the same things even more, even though usually Bluetooth works pretty seamless. So you, you don't really notice how, quick it, how quickly it's working, but they continue to make it better. They're still offering Bluetooth 5.3, which added more power efficiency, protection, power cycles, uh, stability, security, and efficiency. So definitely it was pretty crazy. And it could be also added to, you know, headphones, earbuds, portable speakers, and things like that. Definitely added improvements for those. So something to keep in mind. So if you're looking for the best Bluetooth in audio devices, things like that, 5.2 and 5.3 are pretty important. So definitely something to look into. Uh, 5.3 added those power cycles, which, which just basically comes down to the way they communicate. And so example, there's a low power cycle and a high power cycle. And so when you're listening to your headphones, you're kind of in a low power cycle because it's just communicating music to your headphones. But if you were making a phone call, and you want to make sure that that phone call stays in contact with that Bluetooth so you can hear and you don't lose a call, those types of things, you sw it automatically switches you to a high power cycle so you can communicate with that phone call because it's important. So now you're in a high power cycle and you're not in that low power cycle anymore. So the, the way it communicates is more efficient and it's making that call last longer, making it sound good, making it stay in contact so you're not losing uh, any of that phone call. So pretty cool how it communicates and it's changing the power cycles of your device in that Bluetooth 5.3, kind of important. All right, so now we're getting to the big one, Bluetooth 5.4, bah, 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 bah. All right, Bluetooth 5.4. Now, unfortunately, in my opinion, this is my opinion only, I don't think it's really helpful for 
headphones, speakers, and audio devices, in my opinion. But it, I, it will a little bit, so we're talk about it. But basically, it's more for retail uh, purposes in my, because it does have better security. It has bi-directional communication with response. They have a thing called P. AWR periodical advertisement with response, encrypted advertisement data, an LE GAT security level char characteristics. So basically all this mumbo jumbo is saying is retails are using digital labels on their shelves. Some retails are, retailers are. So basically now your device that communicates with those shelf labels can change prices, can communicate with the label and do different things with the barcodes and it can communicate both ways. The, everything can communicate that way. Those labels and things can be changed. And so this is pretty cool uh, technology for retailers and the security there, you want that encrypted. You don't want people to be able to hack into your system and change, change things with uh, retailers. So uh, the security has to be up there for that as well. And so these are pretty big things changes for Bluetooth 5.4, but like I said, the biggest things for a consumer using speakers and headphones and earbuds and devices that Bluetooth will communicate, if you have 5.4, you will be adding a lot of security, but it does add just a little bit more uh, transfer speed. So you're getting 2x higher with the transfer speeds again, lower power consumption, of course, which is gonna add battery life energy efficient, they want that longer transmission distance, which is not quite like longer range, but just added efficiency with the transmissions when you're at distance. And then better compute, uh, better compatibility with older versions, which is kind of big. So that can help you with headphones, Bluetooth devices, speakers, those types of things that Bluetooth 5.4 is gonna communicate better with the older versions it's not gonna give you all the added bonuses because it is, like I said, all Bluetooth is backwards compatible, but they have to be one-to-one -one from receiver to transmitter. So if you have Bluetooth 5.4, your transmitter, your phone or whatever is transmitting to that receiver, it has to be 5.4 too to get all the added bonuses technology from that version of Bluetooth. So if you have Bluetooth 5.0 on your phone, but Bluetooth 5.3 headphones, you're only gonna get the Bluetooth 5.0 tech cool stuff from that version. You're not gonna get the awesome Bluetooth 5.3 bonuses. So you have to be one-to-one, -one. you have to be, you know, same version to same version to get all the added technology. But 5.4 can backwards compatible is backwards compatible with all the other versions, and it's supposed to be able to communicate better with the older versions. So that's pretty cool. So that can definitely help. So it's not a huge difference in my opinion for you know better speeds and better efficiency. Yes, yes, yes. Those are all great things, but it's more of a retail market update in my opinion but it can add a couple extra things. And I haven't seen a lot. There might be a few out there. Let me know if you see any, like headphones that are Bluetooth 5.4. But in my opinion, if you're at Bluetooth 5.2 or 5.3, you're doing really, really good. Staying with the, up with the tech. I think most brand new iPhones are Bluetooth 5.3. So if you're at that 5.3 level, I think you're doing really good. And you know, you're definitely moving in the right direction. Anything more than that, like I said, you have to be one-to-one. -one. You get the added bonuses anyways, so you'll definitely, 5.0 and up is still pretty good in 2024, in my opinion. 5.2 is a big one, so definitely if you can be 5.2 and up, you're doing uh, on the more excellent side, but 5.4 does add some a little bit of bonuses, more retail in my opinion, but uh, still a cool improvement. So that's where we're at. We're at Bluetooth 5.4. Hopefully this is informative. Hopefully it might help one person understand Bluetooth a little bit. And hopefully it was easy to understand and maybe try to make it as easy as possible because even I get a little complicated with all that stuff. So thank you so much for tuning in. DJ Martini Midwest Reviews. If this is helpful at all, give me a like or subscribe. Got more tech reviews, more tutorials in the future on this channel at DJ Martini Midwest Reviews. So 
Catch you really soon on my next video.